afternoon what is it afternoon yet yes it is yeah. afternoon everyone <laughs> welcome to uh, this is sort of workshop four so we're going to jump straight in because i know that we're kind of running out running down on um on time um so i'm nancy mcdonald um and i'm the senior lecturer and program director for early years at university of wales at trinity st david and we're going to be giving you a whistle stop tour of the non-maintained um curriculum so over to you Tash. thank you now uh, I'm Natasha you, Young. Yeah. I'm also uh, an early years lecturer in the University of Wales Trinity St David. I started my journey in um, child childcare and education as a childminder, where I had my own business for several years before I moved into sort of education and care settings. Um, my experience is predominantly with the non-maintained sector, working in um, Kilchoid Matrins. Um, I've also worked on the uh, development of the um, developmental pathways work, as well as this document that we're looking at here today. Thanks, Nat. So I think perhaps one of the scariest parts of the new curriculum for Wales, which we're all becoming very familiar with now, is the requirement and the autonomy to design your own curriculum. For many years now you could go into a classroom in wales um, at the same point in each year and, and see the same things being taught but all of that is changing now and that aligns to the the developing curriculum that is is you know it has the child at the center of it and it's supporting those individual um, children's progress and development this allows for experiences to be authentic and purposeful and it allows us to plan based on our children's interests, their needs and their motivations. However, this can be a very daunting prospect for, for settings and practitioners because it's important that we're supporting all aspects of, of children's development. So the non-maintained curriculum has been designed specifically really to support this sector to continue to meet regulatory requirements and to facilitate and scaffold although not dictate, non-maintained settings to enable children to engage in and develop the knowledge, skills and experiences for lifelong and um, lifelong journey, uh, learning. The four purposes of the new curriculum for Wales and the areas of learning and experience within the new curriculum, as well as the cross-curricular principles of literacy, numeracy and digital competence, have already been mapped to this, um, this document where appropriate and embedded within it. Um, the statements of what matters and the principles of progression from Curriculum of Wales have also been incorporated. This document was written and developed and designed by practitioners who are experts in the field of early years and experts in, in, in the non-maintained sector as well. And the intention, again, isn't to dictate what needs to be done within your settings and nor should it dictate planning, but it should support and allow you to be responsive to children's individual needs and interests. And the intention is to guide settings to deliver a curriculum that is developmentally appropriate rather than a tick list of skills and requirements. Thank you, Nat. So within the new curriculum for non-maintained settings, there are five de developmental pathways, those being belonging, communication, exploration, physical development and well-being. So within these pathways, children should be viewed as being on a journey rather than seeing um, a destination or an end point to it um, before they are able to move on and, and um, to move into that main maintained provision of progression step one. Development within and across these five pathways is dependent on the quality of our interactions and the learning experiences and environments that we create and provide for our children. And this links to that enabling pathways document, so the, the guidance for supporting settings in planning, designing and implementing an appropriate curriculum for learners in that period of learning um, leading up to progression step one. Um, it's about taking a holistic approach to teaching and learning and will ensure that children have opportunities to develop skills across and within those pathways. We should be encouraging um, and making sure that we provide ample time and opportunity for the successful mastery of skills with long periods of uninterrupted play in which children can really become absorbed in their learning. It is therefore our responsibility as practitioners and as settings to provide developmentally appropriate practice with nurturing relationships, which meets the needs of all of the children. And in doing this, we can lay the foundations of positive dispositions and attitudes to learning through ensuring learning experiences are relevant, meaningful and responsive to the needs and interests of each and every child in our care. Thank you, Nat. 
So within uh, the, the, the pathways, there are what, what we call statements, which will support practitioners to support individuals um, learning. So those statements are made up of the I need to statements, I am learning to statements, and my development is enhanced by statements. Um, and these statements are written from the viewpoint of the child. And this further identifies with the fact that the child is at the centre of this curriculum. The child's needs and their interests are the driver for what we are doing with our children in our settings, rather than it being the other way around. They're also written in a way so that they're not one off incidents. They're not something that you might see once and you tick off and say that it's been done. This is a process and it's an ongoing thing. So over the next couple of slides, we're going to look at some examples of those statements within the pathways. And whilst we're doing that, I want you to think about the children in your settings. Um, I want you to think about your settings and how you might see that happening in your own settings. Thank you. Mel. So belonging, the I need one of the I need to statements within the belonging pathway. I need to play on my own alongside or with others. And the I am learning how to, I am learning how to recognise that I am important to those around me. And my sense of belonging is enhanced by adults who can provide consistent care and respect of me. So belonging, as we know, is an essential part of our um, happiness and well-being. And when they are young, children begin to develop this sense of how they fit into the world, how they fit into the groups that are, that, that are surrounding them and their importance within those groups. Strong, secure relationships are vital to this sense of belonging and belonging is important to shaping a child's sense of who they are and what they can become. And as, as such, this should really underpin the ethos of everything that we do in our settings. Um, there are strong links to uh, what it means to be Welsh, um, what it means to, to, to be living in Wales and what it means to be living in a bilingual country. As we know, our traditions and our cultures in Wales are very strong and this forms a big part of this pathway. Thank you, Nat. Communication. So the one of the I need to statements within this pathway is I need to have time to think and process. I am learning how to develop my attention and listening skills in my play and interactions. And my communication is enhanced by adults who support and respond sensitively to my verbal and non-verbal communication. So children need to be able to understand and to be able to make themselves understood in order to learn effectively. Communication involves developing listening and attention skills alongside those vocabulary and speaking skills. An environment that is communication rich will provide children with those opportunities to express and communicate their needs and thoughts and their feelings. Thank you, Nat. Exploration. So one of the I need to statements is I need to explore and investigate and discover. I am learning how to use my mistakes to further my understanding with support. And my exploration is enhanced by adults who observe, notice and use my fascinations to deepen learning. So we know that children have this natural and innate curiosity about the world around them. And this is a very strong motivator for their exploration and their learning. Children are endlessly curious problem solvers who often find delight and awe and wonder in the everyday occurrences. So providing children with those opportunities is important. They enjoy exploring and investigating by themselves, but also with others as well. And they're often keen to share their delight in new knowledge or skills and learn from each other. Thank you, Nat. Physical development. One of the uh, statements in the physical development pathway is I need to express myself in large and small spaces. I am learning how to take risks in my physical play. And my physical development is enhanced by adults who can uh, provide opportunities to experience joy in my physical activity. Again, children have this innate need and this natural urge to move both themselves and the things around them, often repeatedly because this forms part of their development. It involves both gross motor and fine motor manipulation and opportunities for repetition and variety are critical to development as children begin to explore their increasing physical capabilities and adults who can share in those experiences are really important. Thank you, Nat. Well-being. So the I need to statement, I need to feel safe and secure. I am learning how to show my likes and dislikes. 
and my well-being is enhanced by adults who listen to my views and trust my choices. So feeling connected and safe and secure are key elements to developing a strong sense of well-being. Adults who create emotionally safe environments can support children in recognising and managing their feelings and behaviours effectively and in a positive way. And children with secure attachments and relationships can feel confident in themselves and are therefore better placed to make choices. They show greater resilience and independence and can participate positively in everyday activities. Thank you, Nat. Thank you, Taj. Um, okay, so as well as the five de developmental pathways, um, in the document we've got quite a bit in there about observation and assessment, although this is also being um, developed further um, currently um, in sort of Welsh Government working groups. So when we think about um, we know how important that is. So observation and assessment are central points to the non-maintained curriculum and to the success of its implementation as well. Observation plays a key role in our practice, but it should be grounded in our thorough knowledge of child development and the child should be at the centre of the process. So effective observation enables us to analyse what we see and hear and respond in ways that helps children to make progress. Our observations might be planned, specific, or they might be spontaneous um, when something new or significant is noticed that the children are engaging in. Using a range of observation techniques will ensure that we obtain detailed understanding of, of each child. Observations help inform us of children's fascinations and interests. Making the most of these can help extend learning, especially when um, we plan the experiences and the environments for children to explore. And our observations really should be the catalyst for our planning of future learning experiences and environments. Um, observation and assessment are interlinked. Um, ass assessment aims to find out what children can do and should be carried out through in-depth analysis of our observations. And we'll have a look um, at an example of one of these next. Assessment plays a fundamental role in enabling each individual child to make progress at an appropriate pace for them, ensuring that they are supported and challenged accordingly. It allows us to tune into the ways in which children prefer to learn and understand how best to motivate them. But it's also important that we understand that learning is not linear and different children will progress in very different ways, at very different paces and in different directions. Assessment should not be a tick list or a one-off event and the non-maintained curriculum is written in a way that that is not possible. It should be a continuous process that is useful, manageable and purposeful and assessment should be indistinguishable from teaching and learning. We don't have time to go through this, but just to highlight that there is a section in the non-maintained curriculum about enhancing practice um, that provides um, opportunities to reflect on your um, practice in these areas, identify good practice and identify areas for improvement or professional learning as well. And these can feed into your inspection processes, your quality of care reports, um, and so on. These are leadership, physical literacy, inclusion, adverse childhood experiences, schemas and transitions. So what we're going to do is have a little look at Meg. So Meg is two and a half years old. Um, she is settled and established within her setting and she has a slight delay in her language development. So her language development is supported within the setting through one-to-one -one targeted language activities with her key worker. Due to Meg's language delay, it could be that we focus quite heavily on Meg's language when we're supporting her learning and development in practice. Um, and we might have a tendency to do that. So things like naming objects, colours, modelling language. And what that might do is distract us then from looking at Meg's holistic development. Um, so what we need to do is view Meg as competent and capable, looking at all areas of development rather than maybe focusing on um, her deficits or what she's not able to do um, yet. So what we've got is an example of an observation and assessment written up as a learning story um, using the enabling learning guidance and the non-maintained curriculum with the view of the child or Meg as competent and capable. 
So what you can see here is that we've um, the observation has been written aligned to those three enablers within the enabling learning. So the enabling environment, experiences and adults. So the enabling environment, an inspiration to play is set up outside with loose parts such as um, drain pipes, boxes and bowls. The choice and direction of the activity is child led with plenty of time allowed for them to engage in it. The experience, Meg picks up some of the balls and rolls them down the tubes, letting out excited squeals as the balls, balls go shooting down the tubes. The other children and Meg um, no, and staff notice this and excitedly join in. They spend the rest of the time exploring these ideas. The adult role is important here. So the adult prompts children's thinking and action by using open-ended questions. The staff point out that some balls seem to travel faster down some tubes than others and invite the children to test it out, noticing which tubes are slower or faster and using comments such as, I wonder why this one is slower and what do you think to Meg and to the other children. Meg responds to this by lifting one end of the tube and making the ball travel faster. The staff and children respond to Meg with excitement and provide a narrative for Meg's actions, such as, oh, look, Meg, you made the ball roll faster. I wonder what would happen if. This prompts Meg to go and collect some of the heavier balls to test out the theory. Okay, so this is a condensed version of the observation. But what we can do then is we can use this observation as a form of assessment. So within um, that observation, what we can demonstrate is we can show evidence of Meg engaging with all of these aspects of the non-maintained curriculum. So we have the cross-curricular skills of literacy, um, uh, literacy, numeracy, uh, digital competence, etc. We also have areas then of the five developmental pathways, so communication, exploration, physical development, belonging and well-being. So just by observing um, children doing play, doing activities um, and using those three enablers, we can write those up and use them as evidence um, of children's progress. What's also important then with assessment is the discussion that happens afterwards. So you can see in the top left that during that week's staff planning meeting, the staff note that during the activity, Meg demonstrated understanding of the concepts of fast and slow, heavy and light, and was able to respond to problem solving queries and open ended questioning through her actions. Meg explored the resources independently and through interaction with peers. So this is just an example, really, of how the Enabling Pathways Guidance um, observation and assessment can all be used together um, to create an evidence base then for individual children's development and progress alongside um, the non-maintained um, curriculum. And what we've done here is it doesn't have a focus on what Meg is not able to do. So we could have just focused on language within that. Instead, we focused on her strengths and supported her holistic development throughout, which again did demonstrate elements of communication um, for her. Um, so that's just a, a nice example of a way of doing observation and assessment together, where it's the child-centered uh, practices, child choice, that leads what happens in the setting and then the observation and assessment fits around it rather than being led um, by the assessment or by the um, outcomes. So apologies, we don't have time um, to do the other two. But does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask? Nothing in the chat. No. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much, anyone, everybody, um, for attending. Um, both of our emails are there if you wanted to get in touch with us um, to follow up with this or for anything else. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.